the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 7. In our exposition through the Gospel of Mark, we have finished Mark 6, and now we enter into Mark 7. And we'll begin reading in verse 1, and we'll read down through verse 23. A lot to cover uh, this morning, and we'll try to uh, do it under the leadership of the Lord. The Bible says in verse 1 of Mark chapter 7, Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and a certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is to say, with unwashing hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. Many other things there be which they have received to hold, as the washings of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of tables. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? And he answered and said unto them, Well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and mother, and whoso curseth father and mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father and mother, It's Corban, which is a gift for God, that it is to say a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. So in other words, they found a loophole how not to take care of their mom and daddy just saying what this money that I've got, I've already promised it to God so I can't give it to you to help take care of you. Now what good sense does that make? Verse number 12, And you suffer him no more to do all for his father and mother. It's a bad thing when the church and the religious institution, God help me, says, you you got to give us your money, even if you're, and you just come and give us all your money, and so much so that you can't even afford to take care of your own mama and daddy when they need it. That's wrong. Amen. Amen. Shame on pastors making people feel sorry because they ain't got much to give. Because... Hey, listen, this is what he's talking about. Y'all found a loophole around it, and it really wasn't about them not having money. It was, it was a way, hey, I can get out of having to take care of my mom and daddy. That's, that's the real issue here Jesus is dealing with. He said he can be free. Look at verse 12. It says, And you suffer him no more to do aught for his father and mother, so you find a way he ain't even got to take care of his mom and daddy just as long as he gives the money to the church, gives the money to the religious institution. Look down in verse 13. What did they do by doing this? Making the word of God none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things you do. Alright, so now they've got in place things that's making the word of God none effect because they've put on these man-made traditions and man-made extras, and the people actually think they're obeying the word of God when all they're doing is listening and obeying the commandments of men and not God. That's scary to think about. You ought not have to worry about coming to church and wondering if you're being deceived or not. <laughs> we ought not. We got the Bible in front of us, but in these religious institutions in Jesus' days, they were adding to, taking away from, making it all about traditions of the elders and traditions of men rather than the Word of God. 
And they're going through the motions. They honor God with their lips, with their hearts. It's far from me. And he said, in vain you worship me. So everything this people was doing in this religious institution was absolutely of no effect and of no value whatsoever. God refused to accept any of it because it wasn't about God. It was about themselves. Now we come to verse 14. And when he called the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. Verse 15, There is nothing from without a man, listen to this, that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile man. So let's just look at that for a second. It ain't what you put in your body that defiles you. It's what comes out of your body. Is that not what your Bible just said? Amen. Amen. Verse 16. Jesus said, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 17. And when he was entered in the house of the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. Well, we don't understand that, Lord. Verse 18. And he said to them, Are ye so, are ye so without Understanding also, do you not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into a man, it cannot defile him, because it entereth not into his heart, but into his belly, and goeth out into the drought, purging all meats? Verse 20, And he said, That which cometh out of man, that defiles man. Verse 21, For from within, out of the heart of men, Proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile the man. This passage hits home. To all of us. Because whether you like it or not, what Jesus is talking about has to do with every one of us this morning. And the real issue at hand is the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart. The heart of the problem is a problem with the heart. What Jesus is literally teaching about these religious Pharisees and scribes is that though they're religious, they're lost because their hearts have yet to be changed by the grace of God. And their they were teaching was is that they had so separated themselves from everything and they had applied the law, they had interpreted the law and reapplied the law that they could be right with God without the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If humanity was good enough and spiritual enough to be right with God by by accomplishing what the Bible says we ought to do, there would be no need for Christ to have come born of a virgin, live a sinful, sinless life, die on the cross for our sins, be buried and raised again the third day to give us eternal life. If man could do it, Jesus wouldn't have had to go through all that. Amen. The problem, Jesus says, is that it ain't what you're doing, it's why you do what you do. You can do the right thing but do it for the wrong reason and be wrong with God. See, the thing about the Bible, it says that the Word of God is quick, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It, It divides the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And Hebrews 4, 12 says it's a, it's, it, it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. See, I can obey what the Bible says to a certain degree, but if I do it for the wrong reason 
or I'm motivated for the wrong reason in doing that, right? So let me give you a for instance. If the only reason I come to church every week is for my own self, y'all listening to me right here, and to make myself look good like I've done the check mark, I put, I, I made it here, right? And I've just come to be coming. You coming just to be coming isn't profiting you anything with God because you're going to leave the same way you came in this morning. Right, right, man. Right. The whole point of coming to church isn't that I need church. You need Christ. The point of coming to church is to get under the Word of God that it can transform your life. And if you came this morning, you're sitting here and your heart's somewhere else, you're doing yourself no favors. Oh man, you keep on, you will empty you this place. That's not the goal. The goal is you to repent and get right with God. Amen. You are to want to be here. You are to want Christ. See, the reason you don't want Christ and the why you don't like the things of God is because you've got a bad heart. I will tell you what the Bible says about the heart this morning in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse number 9. The Bible says... The heart is deceitful above all things. Let's talk about this word deceitful. In the Hebrew, it's the same root word we get the word and name Jacob. Trickster, schemer, surplanter. The heart is Jacob. The heart is a trickster. Your heart is a schemer. Your heart is deceitful above all things. In other words, your heart will lie to you. You're, this is why you can't just do whatever is in your heart to do because your heart will deceive you. And what Jesus keeps mentioning here, He mentions about this crowd, is that they honor me with their lips. But what is far from them? Their heart. Sometimes the most vocal and outspoken people in the church are not the ones that are right with God because a lot of people just honor God with their lips while their hearts is far from Him. Yeah. It does us no good to get up here and talk a good talk if we ain't walking a good walk. Amen. It does us no good to, to know the Bible and to know the language of the Bible and not know God Himself and be talking about God while we want to be somewhere else, doing something other else, while our hearts is far from Him. He goes on to say, in vain they worship me because their hearts are not right with me. Their heart is far from me. Jesus doesn't just want the things you have. Jesus wants your heart because we've got to understand biblical theology. The heart is the brains of the operation. The, 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 the brain, the heart is the headquarters of you. Let me put it in Mississippi redneck language. The heart is the steering wheel of your life. So goes the heart. So goes your life. It's what's in your heart. And the reason why we're, we're in the mess that we're in is because we fail to understand the heart of the problem is a problem with the heart. And we wonder why people don't want what God wants. And we try to send preachers for years and my whole lifetime and before me have tried to get people to do what they don't want to do. That's religion. A relationship is God goes and does a supernatural sovereign work in the heart of the individual. He changes the heart, therefore changes the direction and destiny of the human being. And until God works in you, you're not going to want the things that God wants. Because you have not yet been born again. It takes more than just walking the aisle and one, two, three, repeat after me. Unless God's got a hold of you and you're done with yourself, you've come to the end of yourself and you're going up 
the white flag of surrender and saying, I can't do this on my own. I need you, Jesus, friend. Until that happens to you, son, you're going to be religious. Amen. And outside the kingdom of God, there's no easy way to get saved. It takes God doing the work in you. It's the God who works in you in the will and the work of His good pleasure. And that's the thing the Pharisees didn't understand is because they had reduced the Word of God down to man's level where regardless of the attitude of his own heart on why he does what he does, and he, he, he makes itself seem like he's keeping the law of God. Therefore, he's right with God. That's why these Jews crucified him. That's why the Pharisees crucified him. Because Jesus is against dead religion. Amen. It is incompatible with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't get saved by grace and then go and live by the law. Because you ain't living the law. There's nobody in this room that is perfectly obeying the Word of God. Amen. And just because you think you're doing more than somebody else don't make you more right with God than the man that ain't doing nothing. Amen. Because it's by grace alone, through faith alone, to the glory be to God alone. Amen. You don't earn the favor or grace of God. It's given to you freely. <laughs> Woo! Freely displayed, freely given that you could be saved. And this grace goes about throughout all the earth. It has appeared to all men, Titus says. So we got to understand, back to Jeremiah 17, the heart is deceitful above all things. Now here's why. Because I dealt with this as a young Christian. How God instantly changed my life and I started doing those things I used to not do. Listen, I was faithful. I, I prayed. I, I loved going to church. I, and, Lord, and all of a sudden, it felt like I was really doing something. Somebody could help me preach right here. And before long, I started looking down my nose at other people that didn't have what I had. And that is sinful. And I started judging people based on whether they had what I had. And so, that's how deceitful it is. And it took me going through some things in my Christian life. Took me having a fall. To humble me. And when I got humbled, so my whole attitude toward others changed. So let's, let's, let's just talk. It's deceitful above all things. And it's what desperately... Wicked. Y'all look up here just for a minute. The problem every one of us has, including Daniel Brookman, is who I look at in the mirror every morning. Here's one. So well, you just don't know the kind of people that surround me in my life. They provoke me and entice me. If that stuff wasn't in you to begin with, you couldn't be enticed to do it. Right. Amen. So whose fault is it you do what you do? Our own. Our own. So now we got to own up. And quit blaming everybody else for our problems because the problem we got originates where? In the heart. And you can remove yourself from all this. Let me give you a little simple illustration. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just going to give you the meat of this and I'll come tell you some things that I got in my notes. Life experiences. I've struggled with my weight my whole life. And I thought the answer was to remove all these quote-unquote bad foods. Yeah. <laughs> you can remove all the bad foods, but if you've got a problem with self-control, y'all listening? It don't matter whether you take all the bad foods and get all good foods, you 
You're going to still struggle with that problem because you ain't corrected the problem. Lay's potato chips. Listen to that. I remember as a kid, their slogan they put on the bag was, I bet you can't eat just one. Bet you just can't eat. What's good to eat one lady's table chip? <laughs> Who's got enough spirituality about you to stop at one? What about Oreos and chocolate chip cookies? Can you just eat one? Now we talk. That's where we all live. Oh, yeah. Y'all see what I'm saying? And so it, the problem ain't chocolate chips. The problem ain't cookies. The problems ain't tater chips. What's the problem? Me. You know why I'm bad on the bugs? Because I don't say no. Right. If I overindulge in food, which everybody in here does. Yes. Let your birthday come around. Right. Yeah. <laughs> don't have to be. No, it's some kind of special. I'm just saying. Fresh bug in the ice cream. Then think about this. Who are we to look down on somebody else that has a problem with drugs when we got a problem with sugar? Amen. Why look down on somebody else that struggles with alcoholism when we're addicted to stuff? Let me get on coffee and caffeine for a minute. Now we all get under the cues now. Same problem. It's amazing how in the world of the church and religion we're so easy to take the gospel of Jesus Christ as by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone and turn it into a man-made religion where we exalt ourselves rather than God by basis on what we do or don't do. Amen. All the while our hearts ain't right with God. That's right, amen. That's the context of this. Now I can preach. That's the whole context because this old religious crowd is mad because these disciples didn't take time to wash their hands before they ate. Yep. Let me talk just a second about this. There is this trinity of spirits that follow Jesus through the New Testament. There is the Holy Spirit which is the righteous spirit. This is Jesus Christ. Following Jesus are these demonic spirits which are these unrighteous spirits. Now this Holy Spirit that abides in Jesus can look at the demonic and the unrighteous spirit and command them to lead and they obey Him. Everywhere Jesus goes, He's confronted with these unrighteous demonic spirits, is He not? Over and over again in the gospel, Jesus is, com is confronted by this demonic spirit. The thing about the demonic spirits, they hear and obey Jesus. But there's a third spirit that follows Jesus everywhere He goes. They're constantly trying to trap Him. They're constantly trying to criticize Him. They're constantly finding fault with His followers. And that's the self-righteous spirit which belongs to the Pharisees and the scribes. The Bible said in verse 2, if I'm not mistaken, that they found this religious spirit is a spirit that gets on man that originates in the heart of man because every one of us worships something and to a certain extent some of us are religious about some things. And if we're not careful this condemning, condescending spirit of the Pharisees will get on you. And will get in you. Later on in chapter 8 of Mark, he's going to say, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of Herod. Why? It's a cancer that's going to have to be cut out because a little leaven, leaven at the whole of A little bit of religion will destroy and wreck your faith in Jesus Christ. You don't believe it? There's only one religion the Bible talks about. It's pure religion and undefiled that visits the fatherless, the fatherless and the widows. And the last part is to keep himself unspotted from this world. That's the only kind of religion that can save. And that comes through regenerated by the Spirit of God. You must be born again. 
And I want five things real quickly. I'm not going to preach them. I'm going to mention to them. And we're going to bring this thing to a close. The very first thing that we see in the first eight verses about this, this peril, this problem we all have, and that these Pharisees have, is that religion, religion causes us to be more concerned with the behavior of others than our own true spiritual condition. Now, I'm not going to be so hard on us because, listen, all of us are plagued by this. How many of us start looking around at other people and start gauging ourselves on how well we're doing spiritually by looking at other people? Oh, every day. We look at somebody and say, Bless, thank God I ain't like him. And we sound like the Pharisee praying, don't we? you got to get rid of that. you got to get rid of that. Just because people sin different than you do gives you no right to condemn anybody. Yes. Amen. Amen. Right. And it's something we all struggle with. See, these Pharisees are more worried about the outside than they are the inside. I know more preachers that are worried about making proselytes and cults, making a cult out of his congregation than he is about their heart. Y'all listening to me? He has to threaten them, put fear in them. Bless God, if y'all fellows don't come to church next Sunday with a white shirt and tie on, we're going to church you. Y'all know I'm telling it, right? You better not miss two Sundays in a row. You're going to get voted out whether you sin or not. That happened to some of our folks here. You get the gist of this thing. If your heart is right, you're going to be where you ought to be. I don't know why I don't hound on people being faithful because if your heart's right, you'll be where you're supposed to be. Now I know how I can pray for you. We all are part of the body of Christ. It does me no good to spend my whole time harping on what everybody ain't doing. My job is to preach what the Bible says and what's presented here. And what the problem is, we're too busy worried about everybody else. We ain't looking at our own self. And that's the problem with religion. And that's infected all of us. Y'all know I'm telling it right. Yeah. Well, well, bless God, I don't understand why they do that. Why ain't you worried about why you ain't doing the things you ought to do? And why are you doing the things you know you ought not supposed to do? I ain't got no time to worry about everybody else because all the problems I got. And I got them. I got them problems out the wazoo. I got them everywhere I go. Because every time I turn around, I'm confronted with my own inability to save myself. And I'm confronted just how much I need Jesus. Religion sees no need for Jesus because they got it all together. They're faithful. They dress right. They walk right. They talk right. They spit white, praise God. We sing the hymns. We carry a King James Bible. We, we down there, we're independent fundamental Bible believing Baptist, bless God. We, we got it all together. We believe we're right. Our doctrine's right. We got everything uh, all together. We got money in the bank. We support missionaries. We do good for what we got. It's amazing what we can do without God. Because if God was meeting with us, there'd be a lot more tear stains in our altars. There'd be a lot more changed hearts and changed minds. The fact is, I can't make you want God. I can't make you want God to do things in your life so you keep going on and doing the same old struggle because you're smitten with a religious spirit that refuses to accept the fact you're a needy. You can't help nobody that don't want help themselves. You can't help nobody that don't recognize their need for help. What do we do? We pray, we stay faithful, we get up and preach, whether it bounces off the back of the pews or off the walls. If it misses the mark, I know God's doing something. There's some people like sponges in here this morning. You're just soaking it in. Taking it in. You like a dry sponge and in, in this rainy season you're soaking it up and you're just pouring it out. You can't even contain it. All others you can care less. The problem is the problem with the heart. Religion 
focus is on. Hey, by the way, let me just before I move on about we focus on what's wrong with everybody else and not ourselves. Being a parent is one one realm that that really affects us. How many of you ever looked at your children and said, "I never would have tried to do what you just did"? How many y'all ever told your kids that? The fact is, the only reason you didn't try it because you were scared Daddy would hang in that. You wanted to do it, and that's why you're throwing it up in your kids' faces that they cause you think you're better than them because you didn't do it. You're like the elder brother. You wanted to do it, just didn't do it because you said you got caught. Y'all help me preach right now. Amen. Reason why some of y'all don't do some of the things you used to do is because you're scared the pastor or somebody in the church to find out about it. In your heart, you want to do it. You get mad when you see other Christians do it and wish you could. And you walk around, who are you to look down on somebody else? You want to do the same thing they do. But you don't want to do it because you're scared you're going to get caught. You're scared you're going to have to have a sit down with the pastor. So if you do do it, you go hide and just say, oh no, we're just having a crisis over at our place. They won't even talk about it. Won't even bring it up. Oh buddy, we got a heart problem. We can't let this get out on us. We got to save ourselves. We can't let this Drama, get out. It'll kill the church. It'll kill the camp meeting. We're all about trying to save our own life when we got a heart problem. Amen. That's what religion does. That's what the Pharisees do. They got all these external rules to make themselves look good while nobody can pick up on their real, true spiritual condition. It's easy to put the old man in a new suit. That's what religion does. A relationship with Jesus puts a new man in the suit he already had. Amen. Hello. Talk about. That's what religion does. That's you see in these first eight verses. That they're mad because they haven't washed their hands. And look what Jesus says to them in verse number six. He said. Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites. What's a hypocrite? A play actor. One that plays the part. Let me ask you, how many of you come up and put on your Sunday best and you just showed up to play the part? Long as I'm here, pastor won't think I've got problems. Long as I'm faithful, long as I come, long as I give a good showing, I'm okay. You can put your hat down because we all got problems. Amen. You ain't fooling, Daniel. And it's amazing how people act. They, it, they act so out of character when pastor comes around. That's why a lot of people, I don't tell them at work that I am a pastor because they'll start acting different just because I'm a pastor. That's doing them no good because it's causing them to lie to themselves. I'm going to act different because pastor's around. Some of y'all going, good God Almighty. He done got you by the seat of the bridges. <laughs> because y'all know it's the fact. You act totally different when I'm around than you do when you're at home behind closed doors. And I'm telling you, religion has taught you to do that. You might as well believe who you are. What you see is what you get with me. That's why this preacher y'all got, he's just very transparent. I'm just an old simple country boy. I'm going to tell it like it is, like it, lump it, whatever. Whatever the consequences are, I'm ready to take it. I done been there, done that, and God took care of me, so he'll take care of me again. See, there's no need of you playing games. There's no need of us acting like we're something when we're nothing. It's not acting like we ought to be something because the fact you start playing the part, you soon convincing yourself you're okay when you're not okay. Listen to what he said in verse 6. He said, You hypocrites, as it is written, this people honoreth me with their lips, their hearts far from me. I'll give you an instance. I don't see y'all. See, the thing about being up here, I see it all. Lord, why? 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 Whew. We laugh about it, but we know it's the 
truth. The people that ain't paid one bit of attention will be the first one to smile at me when they leave and shake my hand. I sure did enjoy that, you liar. <laughs> you sit back there mad as the devil, like a hornet. Frowned up, arms folded, they want to be here. I like you didn't do that. Ah, you didn't come on down here. verse 7 and 8. He says, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrines and commandments of men. What Jesus said, My disciples didn't break the law of God by eating with unwashed hands. They broke your man-made laws and traditions that helped you feel spiritual and you, you have so reduced the Word of God to do's and don'ts that you've missed the point. You're not doing as good as you think you are. They brought God's... And let me just tell you why. Look, look down in verse 21. For from within, out of the what? Heart of men proceed what? Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride... And foolishness. Oh God help us. Out of the heart come evil thoughts. How many of y'all thought something evil this past week? How many days this past week have we thought something evil? How much stuff come to our mind about our past life that was evil? And we go, oh God, I don't want to think about that. Where did that come from? Satan didn't put it there. Where did it come from? Out of the heart. Huh. Adultery. Bless God, I ain't committed no adultery. I ain't slept with somebody that wasn't my spouse. That's what the Pharisees would say, but what did Jesus say? If we look and lust after the opposite sex, We've committed adultery in our heart already. Oh me. Oh me. We in trouble, ain't we? We in big trouble. Strike two. One, we already had evil thoughts. Strike two, we seen some good looking person and it crossed our mind. Something we didn't have no business thinking about. Correct? Amen. Jesus said that's the truth. You see, Jesus has raised the bar where we are not going to keep this. You mean to tell me how can I control my thoughts? You can. But you got to have a new heart. A heart that don't want that stuff even though it's there. Hello? See, it's quite one thing to think about lusting and 
committing adultery than going through with the very act. It all how did adultery always start? It started with thinking about it. That thought turned into a desire, and that desire turned into action. Hello. You better nip it in the bud in the words of Barney Five. What else? Fornication. That is sex outside of marriage. That is sexual things. If you fantasize, Jesus is putting it all out there. Those things come into your mind. You act on them, even if you don't act on them. If you sit there and think about it and keep thinking, they are sinful. And it's originating out of your heart. And then he says, murder. So he says, I ain't never killed nobody. I ain't never thought about killing nobody. What did Jesus say in the Sermon on the Mount? If a man is angry at his brother without a due cause, he's committed murder in his heart already. Amen. You ever been mad at somebody and angry at somebody that really just rubbed you just the wrong way? And you didn't have no reason to be that angry at him. You just committed murder before God. Now we're all in trouble. I don't know anybody that ain't lost their food. Jesus said you commit murder. And you think about the church today, and I think about how much hate is in the church. How much hard feelings and unforgiveness is in the church today. We've given Jesus every reason to hate our stinking guts, but thank God He loves us in spite of us. When we give Jesus every reason to not forgive us, He keeps on forgiving us, don't He? How dare we withhold forgiveness from somebody as much as Jesus has forgiven us? Who do we think we are? Because we didn't deserve what we've got in Jesus. we got a bunch of adulterating murderers in our midst. I'm in that number. So we you. Right now, our odds ain't good if we're trying to get there by works all of us. We done got several strikes against us. Let, let's go a bit further. Y'all bear with me. We're about done. But thank God. Thefts, covetousness. Now wait, I ain't stole nothing. Let me just tell you what. If you look and you covet what somebody else has, Know what Jesus says about it? You commit it to be your heart. Hey. I ain't stealing, but you wanted to. Y'all know I'm telling it right. Y'all ain't y'all. I'm telling you, we ain't been conditioned for this kind of teaching. As long as you smoke and drink, don't smoke, drink, gamble, and whore around, you're okay. No, that ain't what the book says. That's right. Now we're all in trouble, ain't we? We're all in need of grace. We're all in need of mercy. This passage points us to the cross of Jesus Christ. There is no hope outside of Jesus. All our religious activity is vain. Yes, amen. Because if we don't do it from a right heart, it ain't popping in there. Wickedness? I'm not wicked. Tell that lie to somebody else. We all human. Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, we're evil. We're evil people. We don't want to admit that. Oh, I've been changed. Yeah, amen. But so you don't struggle with sin anymore? Who in here sins? We all got sin. We all got sin. Oh, God. So why are we so hard on the world after each other? That's right. Y'all listen? Why are we so hard on them? Yeah. We're standing in the way of them coming to God because we think we're better. Right. Amen. 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 Amen, Pastor! Oh, amen right there. Amen. Amen. We just as messed up as they are, we just don't look like. And until we have an honest conversation about who and what we really are, we're never going to reach the world for Jesus. 
We have to have this reality check. <clears throat> See, the heart problem is a problem with the human heart. It talks about lasciviousness, which is a license to sin. That, that's one that's really hit the back. Once saved, always saved. Bless God, I got saved. I'm going to out and live my life. I'm going to make it to heaven anyway. Live like hell itself. Wrong. I believe in eternal security of the believer because that's what Jesus taught me. But comes with being saved is a change of heart. And along with salvation comes sanctification that you slowly, daily become more and more like Jesus. You can't be saved and keep on doing the things that you keep on using to do. You've got to get where I'm going with it. There's got to be a change, or even a desire not to do those things that you used to do. Amen. Now, he gets on down here and he says, an evil eye. An evil eye? Evil eye? You, 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 you. Look, I'm just going to be real. I never will forget it. I was. It's in 2010 before I ever came up here. I, I had a church member going to have a baby. I went up to a group of women's center. I'm walking up in that hospital, that women's center, and there said a police patrol car running and the door opened. And you know what crossed my mind? Get in and take it for a seat. <laughs> I'm pastor of a church. Could y'all imagine my congregation seeing me on the evening news? Pastor arrested for joyride. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, if you were right with God, you wouldn't even have it. So go tell that lie to somebody else. Y'all find I'm playing. God's my witness. Y'all laugh about it, shake your head, but bless God, you need to resign and get out of here. We don't want no fast and things like that. But who else don't think like that? You don't believe it, you just start trying to find stuff wrong. You got this old evil eye. You like a little kid looking for something to get into. <laughs> I don't know, I'm having a pretty good time this morning because I'm telling y'all just where we all live at. That's right. We all live where Then he speaks of blasphemy. Pride? Pride comes from where? Heart. Pride is a wicked thing. And then he says, foolish. Nobody likes a fuzzy good. I like to cut up and have a good time. So, well, we can't tell because I'm, 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 I'm a serious right now. <laughs> you get me by myself and get out, well, I like to cut up and have a good time. People say, that's foolish. But there's just some things just plain foolish. You know, those foolish things that we do. And we all do foolish things. After we do it, we're like, why in the name of heaven did I even do that? Exactly. Listen to the last verse. All these evil things come within that defile man. You know what our problem is? We don't need a we don't need a new church to go to. We don't need a new job to go to. We don't need a new way of doing things, y'all.